Hi, I'm Ben with TechCrunch TV, and today we're here with Arjun Dev Aurora, CEO and founder of Retargeter. Arjun, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. So uh, most people out there don't know what Retargeter does and what mm -hmm. ad retargeting is. So right. to start off, could you explain what that is? Absolutely. So retargeting uh, solves the problem of people sending a lot of, spending a lot of time, money, and effort driving traffic to their site and not having folks take the action that the website owner wants. And the way we solve that problem is we show ads to people who have been to a site on other sites across the web. And we do that in a way that's subtle and that stays you know, in front of folks about 15 to 20 times per month um, over the course of their kind of daily surfing habits. And so that's what we do. So what would be a specific example, like if someone visited, mm -hmm. let's say, the homepage of Amazon, yeah. uh, is it going to show then an ad for Amazon on another site they go to? Is it going to know their specific purchases or where they browse to? Yeah, so there's, there's varying degrees of, of retargeting and there's various uh, ways in which things, uh, the creative can be targeted. Mm -hmm. So those are all possibilities. It can either just be a generic Amazon ad, it can be the exact product they looked at, it can be an offer based off of their kind of surfing habits around the site itself. So there's a lot of different uh, opportunities and ways in which the creative message can be tailored depending on their surfing habits. Mm. And how have you guys dealt with the whole privacy issue? How do mm -hmm. people feel? Um, I'm guessing most people still don't know that they're, you know, what retargeting is. Right. So you leave a cookie on their on their computer, yes. and now when they visit another site, usually one of the bigger sites, since you mm -hmm. guys are in a lot of the big networks. Right. And they see something, and maybe it's a small brand, and they can recognize, oh, I've been there last right. week. Have you had any backlash from that? Yes. Yeah, so I think there there has been some confusion in the market around privacy and. and kind of what information we have and what information we don't have. So um, one of the things that you know, we like to say is we, we don't have any personally identifiable data. So we don't actually know anything about that user. We don't have their email address, their country, their age, anything like that. All we do, all we have is a cookie, which is effectively a number identifying uh, that, that a user has been to a particular site. And that's all we know. Hmm. And so with the varying degrees, that's something that your customers would control? Uh, in in terms of like if how deep they go into if they want to only target people who've been to a certain portion of their site correct. or a certain product. Yes. So our, our customers uh, speak you know with us and we kind of go through the process around how detailed they want to be with their retargeting, how specific they want to be, um, and that's a process that we go through with them to, to figure that out. And one of the things that's really interesting about what you guys do mm -hmm. is your price point is much lower than most retargeting solutions out there. Right. So uh, can you talk about how you got started, like what made you decide on that price point and right. what got you started doing this? Yeah, I think the price point to us was really, um, I was previously at Yahoo, was working um, you know, a lot with Right Media, with display solutions at Yahoo, and, and there was unfortunately you know, $50,000 minimums or, or very high minimums um, that corp companies had to buy into. Um, and with the SMB division, there were some smaller minimums, but they were still relatively high. So the, the real goal was to make the technology accessible to small to medium sized businesses. And that's why we started out at a $500 price point, something that was palatable um, and allowed us to buy enough media for it to be impactful as well. Hmm. And you guys have, uh, you were founded in 2009, you founded it, mm -hmm. and you've uh, gone pretty much with little outside funding, is correct. that right? That's correct. Um, what do you think is enabled you to do that. I think mm -hmm. with uh, the revenue that you guys are making now, it's a very yeah. enviable position. A lot right. of people would want to get there. Mm -hmm. So was there anything specific that you think allowed you to grow this far without mm -hmm. outside funding? I think we focused on monetization from, from day one. We focused on our customers from day one. Uh, we focused on the idea that you know cash flow is king in a business, and that's, that's the most important thing to allow us to grow. So we were not shy about charging for our services. We knew that they were valuable. We didn't do any kind of free giveaways. and. Um, we, we couldn't because we actually have to pay for the media um, to buy ads on behalf of our clients. And I think that focus on, um, on early monetization, on really caring for and understanding our customers' needs um, allowed us to, to scale. And I think in addition to that, uh, a, a big focus on us internally being very scrappy and only kind of using what we absolutely needed and finding creative ways and partnerships and other ways to kind of get our message out there and attract our first set of clients was was really helpful to give us that initial traction to to scale. Mm. Did you do anything consciously to build the culture of the company, uh, including the scrappiness and any other values that you yes. wanted to bring to it? <laughs> yeah, lot, lots of uh, lots of stories. And I think our, our first office will attest to that. I mean, it was you know we used all the old furniture that used to be cubes in a bank office, um, and you know we tore down the cube walls. We created 
sofas and couches out of those cube walls. And we did a lot with kind of what we already had and what was given to us in the office. So just physically, the space itself kind of represented that scrappiness. And that was our first office. Um, since then, we've, we've moved and kind of taken that a little bit further back. But um, really, the, when you walked in that space, you knew it was a scrappy office. We were using you know, $300 e EPCs and, and really cheap early equipment to just get started. All of our stuff was in the cloud, um, you know, doing everything we could to kind of stay scrappy. And it was uh, very much a cultural thing, very much a you know, physical thing being in the space. So hmm. a lot of different elements there. And where do you see Retargeter going forward? You mm -hmm. have a few products that you categorize under Retargeter Labs. So right. you have a social product there. Mm -hmm. um, you have a few other ones, specifically SoundCloud yes. uh, integration seemed interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about where you see Retargeter going in the future? Yeah. Um, I think what's interesting, what's happening with the industry in general, is that there is this trend towards audiences online. So in the past, you used to go to a website and buy ads against that site. So you'd go to ESPN.com and buy ads against ESPN.com. Now, with the advent of real-time bidding technologies, you're actually able to go to folks like us and say, we want to target the male demographic between 20 and 35 that lives in you know, particular region. And that has uh, really shifted the way people buy media. And so I think we're, we consider ourselves kind of a forefront in that, that shift. And with that, the retargeting is, is a core to that. So that's the audience piece. Um, that's where you're targeting your own audience um, with ads against, you know, across the web. But we're also doing more to allow people to find other audiences to drive initial traffic, not just return traffic. Mm. So I think that's really where, where Retargeter is going from a targeting perspective. I think um, from a creative perspective, there's a lot going on with social media, with some of the SoundCloud integrations and other things you spoke about. So other ways to look at that space and say, this isn't just a, uh, you know, an ad. It's really a space you're renting and you can do a lot of creative things mm. with it. Um, and lastly for us is inventory, which is the most important. So we're continuing to build partnerships um, you know, with different inventory partners so that we have access to as much uh, display inventory across the web for, for our clients. So that really, those three things are what we're focused on as we look in the future. And right now with your ad inventory, you mm -hmm. partner with um, a lot of the big, yeah. uh, can you talk about what, what some of the advertising partners you use are? Absolutely. So we work with lots of different ad networks, ad exchanges, and, and publishers directly. Um, so some of the folks that um, you know, people are familiar with, so the, the Yahoo Red Media Network, the Google AdX Network, AdMeld, uh, the Fox Network, uh, Microsoft and AdACN, uh, Glam Media, and, and a host of, of others. Um, but those are some of the, some of the bigger names. So one thing that I saw with, so right now with the social integration that you guys do, it's basically mm -hmm. instead of where a banner ad would go, right. it's now basically a Facebook like button mm -hmm. with something about the brand or it's a right. box with their tweets. Yes. Um, and are, how concerned are you with Twitter, Twitter's ad network mm -hmm. be, becoming more popular? Yeah. Facebook ads obviously have mm -hmm. had a long, a long time to mature. And those are all internal networks that you guys don't have access to. Right. So are you concerned at all with, uh, social ads gaining popularity mm -hmm. and a lot of the really uh, deep integration being something that you can't do as easily? Yeah, I think um, that that is kind of an, an area of concern, but I also think it helps validate the market. I think it validates that social ads are meaningful. Um, and so I think we're, if anything, we're excited about it. We use them internally all the time. So we're big Twitter advertisers, we're big Facebook advertisers. We understand those platforms and we kind of appreciate uh, what they're doing to to help people understand that having a social presence is important. And because we're not really advertising on those platforms, but we're driving people to those platforms, you know, we've, we've uh, you know, gotten kind of a lot of respect for that from our clients and, and kind of no pushback from, from the platforms as well. Hmm. Yeah. What's, what's a general example of an advertiser that mm -hmm. came to you and did mm -hmm. a campaign that you particularly thought was interesting that you can share with everyone? Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, one uh, product that is probably, you know, a very traditional e-commerce platform is, is the Clean program. So we've done, it's a 21-day cleanse. We've done work with them for a long time. Um, and that's a, a pretty standard traditional retargeting uh, campaign. And, you know, what they, what they did is when folks would come to check out the program on the site, um, they would, you know, spend some time reading about it. They weren't necessarily quite sure if it was for them right away. But um, as they continued to surf around the web for the next few days, they'd start to see ads for the clean program. They'd see social proof messaging. They'd see uh, messaging about, you know, other celebrities that have used it and, and kind of the value of the solution. 
And that has really helped drive you know, a lot of conversions for them, has helped raise awareness for, uh, for the clean program, and, and uh, you know, it's been a very successful campaign. So that's been a, a traditional uh, retargeting campaign that's worked very well. And what kind of numbers have you seen with the click-through rates on mm -hmm. retargeted ads versus a traditional a display ad that someone would purchase? Yeah. Um, so what we typically see with retargeted ads is anywhere from 0.15 uh, CTR to kind of a quarter percent on average. And um, we, you know, with our latest kind of set of ads, we were seeing uh, CTRs as high as 0.75. So really kind of strong uh, click-through rates. Typically with traditional display advertising um, in an untargeted or even somewhat targeted fashion, they can be as, as little as 0.01 to, you know, 0.1 if, uh, you know, if you're lucky. So we see you know, orders of, of magnitude differences in, in click-through rates, mm -hmm. um, as well as the, the branding effect as well. Seeing uh, an ad for a smaller organization on a big right. site uh, really is, is a powerful way to kind of just get that awareness factor. And last question, mm -hmm. uh, how has your revenue grown from 2009 when you started to today? What kind of growth have you seen? Uh, we've seen some pretty consistent uh, high triple-digit growth uh, year over year. Um, and we uh, are on track to continue that pace uh, into 2012 as well. Is there any kind of ballpark revenue number that you can share of where you guys are at today? I'm not comfortable kind of sharing that right now, but uh, uh, well into the uh, multi-millions, I'll probably leave it at that. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. great. Arjun, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.